high German from over a thousand years ago from the 10th century when Jews began settling around the Rhineland in what is now Germany, coming from mostly uh, the Mediterranean area, Spain and Italy in particular. They started settling there and began speaking the German dialect of the time, which was Middle High German. And they spoke it with their own accent of the time, hard to know exactly how they sounded in those days. And they wrote down the new words they were learning as they, they heard or picked up the local dialect of German, or the precursor to German, and they wrote it in the Hebrew alphabet. So Yiddish from the very start, as it became, as it was beginning to become a unique language unto its own, was written in the Hebrew alphabet, differentiating it in that way from the German of its time at the outset. But it was pretty much the local German dialect at the start, just written in the Hebrew alphabet. So if you know how to read Hebrew, or at least you're probably familiar with it, it looks quite different from the Latin letters, the, <coughs> the English alphabet, which is the Latin alphabet. <clears throat> so, Yiddish became more of an independent language several centuries later when Jews began settling in the Slavic countries, Poland and other Slavic countries, Eastern Europe, Romania, um, what is now uh, Bulgaria, Romania, um, and uh, uh, of course Russia, Ukraine, uh, Belarus, Belarus, they say in Yiddish, it's uh, white Russia, Latvia, Lithuania. The major Jewish centers of, of uh, culture, as the clusters of populations centered there, became uh, Poland and Lithuania and the Ukraine. Those, those became the main uh, clusters of Jewish population and Yiddish culture over the years. And the, the, also the dialects of Yiddish um, became uh, more differentiated there. The main three dialects of Yiddish became the Polish, Ukrainian, and Litvish or Lithuanian dialects. Uh, Polish also is mainly known as Galicia, Galiciano. You've heard that, right? You probably. Have. So that's the, there are other Polish dialects of Yiddish, but Galiciano from southern Poland, mainly straddling U the Ukraine also, and straddling what is now part of Austria and Hungary, because borders kept changing. But that was all Galicia. So that's the Galiciano dialect became a major dialect, and there was. Litvish, Lithuanian dialect, and Ukrainish, or the Ukrainian dialect. Anyway, today what we're doing is celebrating Yiddish together. I want to review a little bit about the history, in case you didn't know, or even if you do, of, of the Yiddish language, very rich language and cultural heritage. And uh, we're going to have some fun too, because I have a couple of very special partners, puppet partners, who are going to help talk about Yiddish as well. Talk to you in Yiddish a little bit and have a little conversations um, and uh, maybe teach you a few basic expressions and words that are fun, uh, whether or not you already know them. Um, so, wie viel von euch verstehen, was ich sage jetzt? Hätt du verhand, seid ihr so gut? Oder ihr versteht, was ich sage? Er ist ein halb von dem Eulen. Maybe a half of the audience, approximately. An Erich means approximately. I just asked everybody, for those who didn't understand, to raise your hand if you understand what I'm saying. <laughs> so that gave me a good idea. Okay, well, hot nit kein Moira. What does that mean? Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. I, I won't speak Yiddish most of the time. We're going to celebrate Yiddish, but we're going to talk about Yiddish, and I will illustrate a lot of Yiddish words and expressions. And what? Okay, so... Uh, but most of the time we'll be doing that primarily in English. So, and now this this program developed from um, uh, from um, a, an annual event about um, reading club. I, I forgot what it's called now. You probably know. Maybe some of you know uh, on Long Island. Um, and this year, every year they choose a different topic. It was a Holocaust topic. The book that they chose that names slips to my mind. The Lost Wife. The Lost Wife. That's it. It's a Holocaust theme. I haven't read the book myself, but um, it's uh, so it, it developed out of that that um, the libraries are uh, looking for some kind of associated program, and it was determined that this program that I offer, combining various uh, knowledge and talents that I have, um, would be appropriate. Uh, of course, something specifically about the Holocaust um, is, is something different because this is not a program about the Holocaust. There's a definite link here, though. Because in celebrating Yiddish together and having fun, um, we also are remembering, commemorating the fact that the vast majority of the Jews who died in the Holocaust were Yiddish speakers. That was their language. So it's, um, I think, a great mitzvah to help in what little ways we can to help revive the language Yiddish and the culture connected with it. That was the primary language of Jews throughout Eastern Europe for several hundred years. The Holocaust, of course, was a, 
to the people, but to the language and the culture of Yiddish. There were other factors, though, that were, uh, that were contributing to the demise of Yiddish um, beginning around uh, 100 years ago, turn of the 19th, 20th centuries, which were, was, of course, assimilation, natural progress, but Jews assimilating, they begin speaking whatever local language of the country, and very often, usually at the expense of Yiddish, which had been their native language. And then there was other types of persecution, of course, in, uh, in the Soviet Union. Stalin, of course, um, also uh, killed, uh, they had a purge of, of Jews, uh, Jewish writers and intellectuals, uh, which killed many thousands of them, including some of the great Yiddish playwrights and authors. And of course, um, under his reign, there was suppression of religion, and by the same token, uh, the culture associated with religion, so Yiddish was, was stifled in, in those years under Stalin. So, of course, that was another big blow to Yiddish. Uh, so, several blows are, uh, resulted in the fact that Yiddish is nowhere near what it used to be as a spoken language, uh, but there is still hope because a lot of people are learning Yiddish in universities. I learned Yiddish in Queens College, part of CUNY, many, many years ago. I was a Yiddish major. I have a degree in Yiddish language and literature. I know some Yiddish from home, too, from a Yiddish Sunday, Sunday school, Azutik Shula, Yiddish Shula, that my parents sent me to. I, so I had a taste of it from my grandmother. I learned a little Yiddish, too. But I mainly studied it very intensively and have since then taught many Yiddish classes, both for children and adults. I've done Yiddish translating as well. And uh, so that's uh, what is something very dear to me, very dear, near and dear to me is the Yiddish language, a very rich language, as I began to say a few minutes ago, for one thing, a combination of different linguistic sources. The bulk of the vocabulary still is uh, Germanic in origin, but of course with some different grammar, grammatical rules than in uh, modern German and pronunciations. And there's also um, a Slavic element, a number of Slavic words which were added to Yiddish, incorporated into the language as the Jews settled in the East European countries. And from the start, there were a number of Hebrew words. Um, <clears throat> now, the Hebrew words, of course, logically, you, you'd probably guess that uh, anything that had to do with religion, uh, Jewish religion, um, tends to be used, the Hebrew words tend to be used for those. And um, also, um, words um, of of ritual and uh, words of uh, um, I say deep thinking and stuff, the things that along that line so come from Hebrew. Um, and some words it's hard to know exactly why, but they just enter the language as a natural course. So the um, the Hebrew element, for example, uh, words like uh, different concepts. The fact the, the word concept itself, hasoga, that's a Hebrew word. And it means concept, and then sholom and milchoma. Right? It means what? Peace and war, right? Both of these are all Hebrew words, but used in Yiddish. Mishpacha, things to do with family, a lot of that is from Hebrew. Mishpacha is family. It means it, it, it's usually used in the context of broader family, wider, like all the various relatives. And for that matter, kroivim, vosmeit kroivim. What does that mean? Anybody know? Kroivim are relatives. Okay, so it's connected with Mishpacha. And COVID. What means COVID? When I say what means, that means what does it mean? COVID is honor. Some people, yes. Uh, now, somebody said respect. That's also, we use the Hebrew word in Yiddish, derech eretz. So you might have heard that. Derech eretz means respect, but it is also of Hebrew origin. How about nachas? You know, what uh, would Yiddish be without nachas? Nachas is a special pride and joy that people fear, feel for loved ones, especially for children, for parents, for children, or grandparents, for children. But you can have nachas for anybody. It's generally familial, right? So nachas is not one word, I don't think, in English, which is quite the same. I mean, there's pride and joy, you could say. But the one word, uh, uh, nachas, says a lot. So that's also from...